Okay, welcome. Today I'm going to write uh, one of them built-in runtime functions called instring. That's I-N-S-T-R. And I'm going to make it as lean and mean as possible. Then after they, we get that working, I'm going to write a SIMD version of the instring function. SIMD is single instruction, multiple data. And what that's going to do is uh, the exact same thing, um, but it's going to be using obviously the um, special instructions for processing 16 bytes per iteration of a loop. And then we're going to compare the two in some time tests and see which one's faster. So let's get going. This I've got to start it here with uh, a simple console window template. And we're going to need to make a function here to test in string. And down here, I'm going to make the function. Okay, so we need some a test uh, test string, some test data. And we'll have a couple. For, for the initial startup of writing the function, I want to make it as simple as possible. Uh, what this is going to be, I'm going to make a, um, it's going to be a static. Uh, the reason I do static is so that it's not stored on the stack, since this compiler doesn't allow you to put buffers on the stack. Um, it's going to be a DB, which is a stands for a single byte, but it's going to be 10 hex bytes. It'll be 16 bytes large. And now I have a new keyword here that I've been working on called with properties. That's going to replace from the previous video a not stack keyword. Well, the not stack keyword is uh, doesn't exist anymore. Now I'm using this keyword called with properties. And the name of the variable will be called my path. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it some initialization data. Uh, one, two, three will be a backslash. Four, five, six. So that will be the string that they're going to be searching, and we'll be searching for the backslash. And the answer will be character three. We want these function, this function, these functions to return the numeric three, being the position of the backslash. Now the in-string version I'm writing uh, has return doesn't return a when it returns a zero means that nothing exists. When it returns a one two three four five six or a three that means it's at position three. Okay, so now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make an immediate, which is, uh, you could consider that the same as a constant. And I'm going to make it to be 5C. So 5C is the ASCII number for the backslash. Okay. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to invoke the instring function. I'll tell you what, I don't want to quite do that yet because I have existing instring functions in my runtime that we will be not using today. Well, let's just type it and see what happens. So I do have two existing instructions for instring. And they're, they're global, so they pop up in the IntelliSense, but we will not be using those. We're going to be writing a new one. Um, so let's just kind of leave that line hang in there, and we'll come back to it. So let's write the function in string. You know, let's call it in string new so that the other ones don't even pop up. That. that sounds like an idea. 
So what I'm going to have here is I'm going to make the parameter to be, first of all, by ref. I have to use the by ref keyword for all the assembly data types because they default by, by value. Uh, so I do want to pass strings in by, by address. Um, this is where the, it is going to require that the string has with properties. It's going to be a DB. And it's going to be the name will just be some text. Okay. Uh, now the second parameter is going to be just an ASCII character, just a number. Uh, it's going to be a db, which is just a one byte number, or an eight bit number. So this instring function is going to be a simple variation of the real instring function, because obviously the real instring function compares a string versus a string. Uh, this will be a simple variation of it that, that can be overloaded uh, with multiple versions. Uh, the other, a different version could have a string comparison on a string. Just for the sake of us making a simple video, this version is going to be uh, just a character as a second parameter. One character, not a string within a string, a character within a string. Um, the reason I find this to be a, a valuable function to have is that a lot of times when I've done in string, it's just I am looking for just one character, like a, a greater than, less than sign backslash, forward slash, what have you. And uh, this um, this overloaded function will, will be useful. Okay, so <clears throat> what I like to do is kind of start out imagining my, my loop boundaries. Um, I am going to use RAX as my looping variable and because it's also the return variable. Um, and here I'll have uh, this will be the top of my loop. And then down here uh, let's see I'm going to be doing a compare of Rx versus some text the quantity used. And then I'm going to have it jump up. So uh, as long as Rex is less than or equal to, that's what I'm thinking. So I do need to increment Rax in the loop. Okay. So what I have here is a is a little um, just kind of a setup of the function. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to use Rx as a looping ver looping variable. It's going to increment at the top of the loop. It's going to compare Rx with the quantity used. Now the quantity used is a property of the string. That's what that's what these properties are. But it's actually just kind of hidden data that's stored before the string. Um, but I do want to make this kind of a streamlined function, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna make a local variable. I'm going to make it a register, and I'm going to call it, well, let's call it a quantity used. And I'm going to move into quantity used, some text dot, 
quantity is. Then down here, the only reason I'm doing that is because I want to pulling out the quantity used is uh, about two lines of assembly code, and if you pull it out of the loop, then it makes things run faster. Because I do want to make this thing kind of as fast as I can. So all I did is uh, this quantity used variable slash register will actually be R10. So I want to load R10 with the basically the length of the string is, is what quantity use really represents. And then when my loop does its comparing, it will have the value preloaded into register to do the compare against. So it'll make it quicker. Okay. So now we we have we need to do now is put in the guts of uh, what's going on in the loop. And what I need is to load in the byte out of off the string. Now I'm gonna do that before the increment. So realizing that uh, Rx will be zero at this point. Um, and I think I'll just use the BL. Since I'm using Rx already, I'll use BL as my location to store the byte. And some text dot address is the address of the variable plus Rx. So that's a memory calculation that's going to pull in the byte. There's something else I want to add here. I do want to make, okay, I, I didn't put the, uh, the return type. But I do want to make this what's called a leaf function. That'll do is um, it won't use the stack for the local variables or the parameter variables, and it'll make things quicker. Uh, this the first parameter, some text, is passed in the RCX register, so it'll be using RCX, and it's is by ref, so RCX will have the address of the string, so. Literally, what the compiler is going to do is, when it sees some text dot address, it's going to put RCX in there. And the second parameter is um, RDX. It's the lowest. It's a byte, so it's going to be DL is the register that this will be loaded into, and it, it's going to be using that there. Okay, so. Um, so I loaded in the byte. Go ahead and increment Rx now, although, uh, and now I'm going to compare BL with, I could say DL there, I'm going to say ASCII care, and that should become a DL when we, we'll watch it and make sure. I, I know what things should be, doesn't mean that the compiler always does what it should. Uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of a new version of the compiler, so we'll see how well this works. Um, so when it does compare to see if we've found our character, um, we want to jump if it's not equal to, and, and right here will be found it. That's their loop exit. Now it'll be a return. Okay. So uh, since I did the compare and the jump after the increment, uh, that means that Rx is now not a zero anymore. It would be like one. Well, in this case, it'll be three. It should be three. Let's put it that way. When the return happens, so the the return values already loaded and ready to go. I think that's basically it. Um, let's kind of wrap this up and we'll just we'll just do a little test and watch this in the debugger and see if make sure we got it. So now I'm going to invoke in string new 
and what we're going to put in there is my path and with a backslash. Okay. Now we want to print some results. So we're going to print print one. So I do have another print function that's overloaded. It's the third one down that I'm going to use today. It makes things a little simpler. Um, I'm going to say in string new Let's go over to the debugger and see what we got. Here's our program in the debugger. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to single step through it here. That one's our init CMD that will initialize the console window. Here's our test in a string. We're going to go into that one. Now, RCX is loaded with the address of my path, and our debugger shows us that. But the double black backslash is really just a single backslash. And our DX is loaded with 5C, and it shows us that as a backslash hop. Very nice for a debugger. And I've figured out a few things about this debugger. I can follow that address in dump 1, which is down here. 1A0C8, 1A0C8. There's in memory of what we have. It's 31, 32, 5C, 34, 35, 36. So that's 1, 2, backslash, 4, 5, 6. There's our string. What's neat about this is I can go up a line and see what's before our string. Before our string is our two properties. This is 6 is the length of the string or what I'm calling quantity used. And 8 bytes before that is another property called quantity, which is the total size of the buffer, which is 10, which is 16 bytes. So it's padded with all these zeros. And that's, I believe that's, in my opinion, I haven't proven this, but that's going to be a requirement for doing SIMD instructions, is to have these strings padded with plenty of zeros because each iteration of the loop will be running in 16 byte chunks. So that's um, going to be a requirement. But we're not there yet, so we're not going to talk about that. Uh, so here's our function. We're going to go into it. And there it is down there. We didn't go very far. These first two lines here shows uh, the compiler missed an optimization. It, it did in two lines of code what it could have done in one line of code. Uh, you see it moved into RCX into RSI and then used RSI. That could be an RCX right there. Um, I'm not going to worry about that. So RCX is the address of the string. Minus 8 is 8 bytes before it, and that puts us at that point. So it pulls into R10 the value 6, which is the length of our string. That will be our variable called quantity used. And we'll be using. So here's the top of the loop, or the line before the top of the loop sets Rx to 0, which is our looping variable. And you can see that RCX is the address of the string. The compiler Put that in there nicely. Uh, our AX bin or offset, and we move in the first byte into BL 31. Down there is the 31. It just um, 
did an address calculation, pulled that 31 in to BL. There it is. Now we're going to increment RX, which is adding 1 to it. I like how this debugger puts, makes the lines red when it changes something. Um, so there's 1. Now we're going to do a compare. Compare BL with DL. DL is our second input parameter, and it's the number 5C, which is the backslash. So is 31 equal, or actually, compare is a subtraction, so it would be uh, basically 31 minus 5C is, is what it's going to be doing. Uh, it does a subtraction, but it doesn't write the answer anywhere. It doesn't change anything. So when it, you took 31 minus 5C, um, sign flag. There it is. Uh, that shows it's a negative number. Uh, we're going to be looking at the zero flag. So um, that it's not zero. Zero would mean that they're equal. So we're going to jump not equal. So since that's a zero, they're not equal. We will do the jump. Boink. Alright, so now we're going at the bottom of our loop and we're going to compare Rx with R10. And so that's basically 1 minus 6 is what it's going to be doing. Uh, 1 minus 6 is a negative number. Jump less than or equal. And sign flag is a bit as high, so that means it is a negative number. Uh, it's not equal. And jump less than. It will jump. Okay. Now we're at the top of the loop, which we didn't go very far, and we're going to load in the next character. So since Rx is now a different number, the address calculation will pull in a different character. Now we have 32 that got pulled in, which is from that spot right there. Now we're going to increment Rx, our looping variable is now 2, and we're going to do a comparison again. Is it is 32 equal to 5C. Jump if it's not equal. It jumps. Now we're going to compare. Alright, here we go. You get the idea. Now we're going to see if we're out of our loop. No, we're not out of our loop. We're going to pull in the next character. Now we're on the third character. Now it's 5C. We found our character. Now we're going to increment Rx to 3. We're going to compare the two jump not equal. Uh, now the zero flag bit is set, which means that it, the answer of the subtraction was zero, which means when they're zero, they are pretty much equal. Jump not equal, it did not jump. Now we're in our going to return from the function, and at the point in time when the function returns, and there's the return is just up there, um, rx is equal to three. So um, when I said we're not using the stack and leaf functions, not exactly true. For for parameters and lo and for parameters, we're not using the stack and, and no locals. Um, when you do a call, there is an address pushed on the stack, and that when I did the return, that popped back off. And you can uh, just FYI. All right, so now we're going to print the result. Pull my console window in here so you can see that. In string new, nth equals 3. So there's our first function. It pulled in the right answer. And let's go full speed on the program. And full speed is press enter to continue. And we're done. Let's go back over and write our next function. All right, now it's time to write the scary SIMD version of the in-string in function. And we'll do that about right here. I want to make it a DQ leaf. So that it's the same as the other one. 
string simd and I'm going to give it the same parameters. set up my loop just like I did the last time. I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm kind of looking down on line 1B. Uh, I'm going to make another quantity used. Variable. I'm going to move into quantity used. Some text. Uh, and I'm going to move into rex, comma, zero. So it's looking the same so far. Top of loop. Now, at some point down here, I want to do a... Uh, So we don't increment and go one by one in SIMD. We increment in chunks of 16. So our, that's, my, that's our loop increment there. And I'm going to do a compare of quantity use, which is our length of string, with where we're at. JG there, jump greater than. I gotta get my indentions right. Let's turn it back here a little bit. Okay, so uh, that's our that's our loop. The guts of our loop. It's gonna every time it runs, it'll be doing a 16 byte chunk. And let's kind of piece the rest of it in from here. So, I'm going to do something outside of the loop. I'm going to do a move Q. And I'm going to move into the XX, XMM0 register. Second parameters in the RDX register, and I don't. Since it's a mismatch in in uh, registers, I just don't think I'm gonna be able to type in ASCII care. Like nothing ever works. <laughs> if I haven't tested it before, I just uh, I just don't want to go there, for, especially for this video here today. <laughs> I'm gonna type in RDX. Um, all right, so. We need now to do is load in our data just like we did before. Uh, there's a move dqu is what we're going to use, and we're going to put it in the xx xmm1 register, and we're going to do an address calculation. Some text dot address plus our offset which is an rx all right should within the loop it should load in 16 byte chunks in the xx xmm1 and xmm0 will be untouched because it's done outside of the loop all right now this is where you know the difficult step here is just one line of code. And I'm going to type that line of code. Well, 
actually before I typed that line of code, and, uh, and it took me a little bit of time to figure this out, um, I'm going to go over to Wikipedia and look at some documentation on this. Okay, here I'm, you can see I'm on Wikipedia and it's very nicely documented. And, and I found this and I, I thought it was great and I just, I'm going with it. Um, I, I got I to gotta admit to you, this is all brand new to me. And I've, this one function that I've written here, and I'm writing here in this video, is the only one I've written, the only one I've tested. Uh, but there are multiple functions and there are multiple ways that these functions can be ran and it is a little complicated uh, but for this video but today I'm just doing one function one variation of a function um, so you can read through this and kind of check it out and um, this uh, this control byte is going to be the fourth parameter so yeah, um, yeah. There's four parameters, which the first parameter is kind of maybe not really a parameter. Uh, with the control byte, uh, depending on what value you put in that that byte, will make the instruction act differently. So um, I guess I'm not really gonna ramble through this again because I'm not an expert and I just put this together and got one working and I'm just gonna type it in and uh, leave it up leave it up to everyone else to read through this and, and figure it out you know here's the source of where I got my information Wikipedia and there's the page so let's go back and I'm gonna type the instruction in okay here we go P C M P I S T R I. Uh, there we go. It's, it's license plates. Now, if I hit F1 here, it's going to show what my compiler thinks the parameters are for this instruction. And there is four parameters um, RCX. Really, you don't send in anything in RCX, so you don't need to fill it. It's actually the return. It will be the answer. In our example, it'll be. Um, well, it won't be. Won't be three. <laughs> it'll be two because it's it starts at zero. So, um, but we'll add one to it and it'll make it three. Uh, the first XM M register is. going to be our ASCII character, which is the string we're searching in. The second will be, it can be a register or memory, but we're going to use the register XMM1, which is our, our loaded data. Um, I guess there's a variation of this function. I could have tried to use it from memory, since I have a memory calculation, and uh, that actually may be a little quicker version. I did not do that as well. I do actually have to take the extra step and load it into the register, but it is it is capable of looking right at memory. Um, so let's see. Now the last byte, the last parameter is the control byte, and we're going to give it that magic value, and that will control what the function does. So sorry if this sucks, but let's just push through this. So. RCX XMM0 we're searching XMM0 uh, we're looking we're looking in XMM1 and our control byte is 0 by C and what that is in binary is 1100 binary and you can go to Wikipedia and look that up and check that out all right now when that's that one line of code does all the work and it's literally kind of like built in 
built-in assembly into the CPU, kind of baked in the CPU. And it, in, internally, it's running you know, multiple lines of code to figure this out. And we're going to test that today to see how good it is versus our other function. That's the whole point of the video. So when the RCX comes out, we have to compare RCX. Originally, I did zero because I was thinking, you know, if you don't find it, you're going to get a zero. Well, that's not what came out. What came out, if you don't, if you don't, if there's no match, it comes out of ten, which kind of makes sense. If RCX is a looping variable and it goes through zero to F, and it doesn't find anything, and then it increments itself. It would end up at ten. Um, nothing I can do about it. It's just the way it is. Uh, so we're going to jump if it's equal to 10, which means we're going to keep looping. And here will be the found it, which means it found a character. And at that point in time, we're going to add Rx, what's in Rcx. And what that's going to do is Rx is our offset in memory, and Rcx is the point on the current buffer as an offset of where the character is found. So adding the two together, we'll find the point in memory of where the match is at. And if, since Rx is an offset, we've got to increment it by one, and that's where that uh, that's where that return turns into the nth position. And there's our return. And believe it or not, that is it. That's what I'm calling done. Uh, so let's go to the debugger and watch this run. I take that back. We can't watch it run yet. <laughs> premature there. Um, we, in our test, we have to invoke our new function in the string cmd. And we're going to send it in my path. We're going to send in the backslash. And hopefully that returns three. I'm gonna now invoke prince.code.printman and I'm gonna say in string cmd nth equals rax. Okay. And then we have to compile it. Don't forget that little step. Now we can go to the debugger. Okay, here we are in the debugger. Let's step through this. There's our console window. Drag that out of the way. There's our function that's going to call the tests. There's the first in string. There's the first printing of the in string. There's our no op. Just drag this back so you can see that. And let's, this will be our simd function, which isn't very far away. We can see our XMMs in there. There's our address of our input buffer. It's the same as before. There's our six characters. One, two, four, five, six. There's the length of the string. Same as before. Okay. Here's our com missed compiler optimization. Same as before. R10 holds the length of the string. Rex will be our offset memory. It'll also be our loop incrementer. 
Okay, move Q, X mem 0 RDX. Okay, so RDX is our 5C for our backslash. And X mem 0 is a register down here. And there we have our search character. <coughs> okay. Well, oh, I stepped over that one. So. By the way, X and MM1 is our data. Got loaded in with our address for a string plus the offset, RX offset. And you can see there's 3132.5c, and it's, of course, backwards from memory because it's um, memory's reversed and in. And uh, here's our magic, our magic instruction that's just going to do what it's going to do. It's going to look at these two inputs. It's going to look for where there's where is there a 5C within here and it'll return its offset counter which is RCX and uh, which should be 0, 1, 2. So let's execute that line. I'll go up here so we can see our RCX register and there's two. They return two. So it pretty much did all the work for us in one shot. Uh, which is nice. Um, this variation of the function is actually of um, the function PCMPISTRI is actually a string compare. So if we would have had more characters in there it would have looked give us an answer for the more searching for a larger string, which I'm not doing in this video. I'm only doing a one character search. Uh, so it opens a door for, for more work here. All right, now we're at the bottom of the loop. No, not, no, not yet. Uh, so we're going to look at the answer, RCX, and we find out that it does have something other than 10, which means it did find something. And it's going to kind of modify Rx. And again, it's going to, Rx is our offset, so it's going to add Rcx and Rx together um, to get the position, or the total offset, I should say. And then incrementing Rx by 1 now turns it from an offset into an nth position, which is what we want. And we can go take a look at that. So it turned into a 3. And now we're going to do a return, and that is it. I'm going to print that out, and we see that our SIMD version of instring seems to be working at the simple level. And we're going to run the rest of that program, hit enter, and we're done. Well, let's go back to the compiler. Okay, I've done some off the video coding here to get this time test set up. Uh, to spare you the boredom of watching me go through all of that. Uh, here's one of the first things I have is I'm declaring a string at the top of the module that we'll be using for the time test. Uh, it's a little bit longer. That 9 in there is a tab character, and that's what we'll be searching for. And I purposely made the search go through some more than 16 characters before it finds its first um, the character it's looking for. So the SIMD version will run two two iterations of the loop. Um, also, I have this invoke time test here. time test. I'm not going to trace through this. You can kind of check it out, but it's a, it uses this runtime function called time function, which passes in the address of a function. It's going to time the function, and that's basically it. Um, here's the two functions that are going to run. It's, it's uh, here's the second version, the SIMD version. It's going to, it's going to make 
15 in string, calls to in string, looking for the character 9. And this one is identical, it's 15 calls. Oh, oh it has to be in string new. That's a problem. Um, I did try to run this and it did fail before this point. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why it failed and we're going to fix it. Let me just get this in here first. That would have been not so cool. That would have been that big a deal. Just been running the wrong one. Um, okay. So where are we at here? Okay, so this function here is one that did not work, and, it, and it, it didn't work when it did the second iteration of the loop. And what happens is, is that typically in the old world of assembly, your loop counter is the C register, which is RCX, and that's apparently how this SIMD instruction is running as well using its loop counter as RCX, because that's the register it's returning. Um, so the problem is, is that also the first parameter of your function, some text, is using the RCX register. And I'm using this right here, turns into RCX, and it's on the inside of the loop. Whereas, but this line here will overwrite RCX with the return from this function and thereby overwriting the address. So that's a problem. Um, so I'm going to make another register. Address of some text. And I'm going to move into address of some text, some text dot address, and which is RCX, and that will be R11. That's going to copy the string address into R11, and this will be address of some text. Yes, that is annoying. Yes, you know, there's the highs and the lows of assembly. Um, we just adapt and overcome. That's, that's all. So let's give that a shot. Let's just go right to the run. Boom. Oh. Okay, the standard run took IE3 milliseconds, and the SIMD version took 2E milliseconds. A lot less. Um, let's go, did I say IE3? I think it's 1E3. Ten times faster. That's not sixteen times faster, but ten times faster is a big difference, I, I would say. Well, let's drag these back. That's it. Uh, the SIMD version kicked ass again, ten times faster, and my standard version of InString is is about as optimized I think I can write it. Uh, it's very simple. It's just a loop, all registers, loop running, and it's still got its ass kicked. 
like tenfold by the SIMD. Uh, the heart of the whole thing is this instruction here, PCMPISTRI. Uh, it, it does most of the work built in and it works great. Um, so if you, if you, I appreciate you watching this video to the end. I appreciate you um, being here and uh, appreciate the comments, whatever they are. Hopefully they're all positive. And if I get a like and subscribe, that would be fantastic too. Until next time, see ya.